What is justice? Who gets to define it? Whose job is it to ensure and maintain it? Are justice and good the same thing? If you have the power to serve justice, are you obligated to do so? If you have the power to help someone, are you obligated to help them? What if the person being helped doesn't want you to? Is power innately corrupting? In a universe where mankind is not only not the sole force at work, but not even the strongest force, do we control our own destiny? Should we? These are some of the questions Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice poses. I was concerned from the trailers that they might take the dark and gritty trend. So far, it loops back into farce. How seriously can you really take a guy in a bat costume fighting an alien in brightly colored tights? It's not about that, though. It's about a clash of ideals. It rips apart some of the fundamental concepts that define how we see the superhero genre, and puts the pieces under a microscope for both the characters and the audience to ponder. It takes the dark realism we love from Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy and Snyder's own Watchmen, and instead of trying to use it as a performance-enhancing drug to make a silly action movie they think audiences want, it uses the concepts from comic books as a vehicle, not only to examine itself, its influences, and other superhero films, but our own lives as well. Snyder is not afraid of even the weightiest areas of politics and religion. Everything from nuclear one-upsmanship and the conflict between morality and pragmatic necessity to a complete metaphorical depiction of the messianic journey. This film is much more of a watchman to than a man of steel to. Until it isn't. The problem with this film, and the reason why it's getting such mixed reviews, is that they really made two different movies and smashed them together. So we have two different groups of people. The ones who go, who put all these action scenes in my dark, slow-paced philosophical meditation on the nature of justice and power? And the ones who go, why do I have to sit through all this boring crap to get to the action movie I paid $10 for? Essentially, once the titular conflict begins, the story ends, and the last third-ish of the movie becomes the brainless spectacle that all the cynics expect with this kind of movie. It's really unfortunate, because all the good parts are so good. There are some truly excellent visual sequences, the opening and the dream fight scene especially come to mind. Batfleck is great. His old, grizzled, fed up with this shit attitude is a different Batman than we've seen previously. And though he does have a couple action scenes, I like the increased focus on the detective aspects of the Bat process. Jeremy Irons is also great as his Alfred, and Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman has already won me over in her limited screen time. Even Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor, which I hated in the trailers, won me over by the end. A lot of people are whining about the changes to Batman and Lex Luthor's characters, at least compared to how we classically identify them, but these characters change and get rebooted all the time, and DC has the right to do what they want with them. Besides, Batman's changes are not really that different from previous incarnations. He's done this kind of shit many times before, and they really made it work here. Overall, I would say it's more good than bad, but it has too many flaws, keeping it from becoming the masterpiece it could have been. Lois Lane is utterly useless. All she does is cause problems and needs saving repeatedly. Her little bit of detective work doesn't even help anything either, because at that point we already knew what she found out, and the hard proof she collected doesn't have any real effect. The plot has some real head-scratching moments in its low points as well. There's no reason for Superman to do what he did at the end. They could have just as easily had Wonder Woman do it, and still worked in the consequences of Superman's actions in a more sensical way. Hollywood screenwriters still can't seem to grasp how nukes work. Hint. The explosion isn't the only dangerous part. Plus, how come no one is mad at the end over how much destruction happened, when that very issue is what sparked this whole storyline in the first place? But the real problem with this movie is that it just gave up on itself. It started out as a nihilistic, anti-superhero film, and devolved into a superhero film. I would be fine with a switch toward a more action-oriented focus, if it didn't just suddenly neglect all the themes that it spent an hour and a half building and exploring. I have an interpretation that ties everything together a little better, of a particular direction-switching moment where the heroes realize their whole purpose is to help people, and that focusing on themselves is only causing harm. But this is never explicitly stated, and I'm not sure it would be enough to fix all the problems anyway. 
We'll see how the extended home release cut is. With Watchmen, it made all the difference. This is a film that requires a lot of context. Not only will you be lost if you're not familiar with the events of Man of Steel, or if you don't know who the character of Batman is, but there's a lot of future world building that is just totally confusing right now, as well as some weird cloudy motivations for Lex Luthor that we'll need some expanding on to make sense. I don't think it's problematic, but we'll have to see how both the additional footage in the extended cut and the future films of the franchise fill in the gaps. But we don't have that information yet. What we have is a long, dark, flawed journey that attempts to appeal to both our intellectual and carnal sides, but can't quite fully satisfy either. It is worth watching for the good stuff it manages to bring to the table. During the first half, I thought that if it kept up what it had going, it could legitimately be my favorite superhero film of all time. At its best, I definitely believe it rises to Dark Knight levels, which makes the mediocrity that comes later that much more disappointing. Snyder's still on board to direct the future DC team-up movies, so we'll see if he manages to hold the ground he gained in my heart with Watchmen, or if he'll complete his transformation into washed-up big studio hack.